this journey into my inner abyss, the deep darkness, the cave within, has been liberating. And we've realized really an ultimate idea that we've never really believed before, but now we understand. Our fear only exists because of our shadow. And so there's always going to be a bit of fear there. But we can minimize that fear. You know, we can make our lives less affected by fear. And not kid ourselves that we can completely get rid of something. In my experience, you can't get rid of nothing. Everything already exists as is. We just stumble upon it. It's interesting because as we journey into the darkness, into our inner darkness, we stumble upon things in the darkness. If you can imagine you're in a house and all the lights go out and it's completely dark. You can't even see your hands and you're stumbling around trying to figure out how to get from point A to point B, whatever that looks like. Whether you're trying to turn the lights back on or trying to get out the house or check on loved ones, secure rooms, what have you. We're all traveling in the dark for whatever reason. But for me, shadow work allows me to find treasures, forgotten things, misplaced things. And interesting enough, in my journeys and in my experience of shadow work, we've stumbled upon a few characters that help liberate us from our ignorance and help us to see things differently. Like, one time we were stumbling in the dark and came across this child that looked like me, but just a younger version. The child looked like it didn't eat for a long time, you know, but wasn't crying, just starving in the darkness and the moment we began to just care and tend to that child a candle appeared lit and for me at the time we didn't understand why these lit candles were showing up after we've done certain things but later we realized these lit candles symbolize a process of healing. You know, like shedding light on a situation. And so after tending to several children that look like me, they all had different issues. Like one dressed like a soldier. It was really interesting because it was kind of cute, you know, like a small version of me, but dressed like a soldier. But this child was very serious, very traumatized as well, but very serious, always running on someone else's time. And it wasn't until we engaged with this child that we realized, wow, that was us. That is us. You know, it helped me understand to take my power back, take my time back. Another encounter we uh, ran into was a child that was just so afraid. Very afraid, like it kept running from me. So it was interesting, like 
we encountered other children, but this one particular child, we kept seeing glimpses of, like it was curious. Every time a candle lit, but then it ran away, and it kept like avoiding me until one moment, you know, it finally didn't run away and we embraced it and tried to get to know it and understand the story behind this manifestation. And interesting enough, when that happened, not one candle appeared, but several. And the interesting thing about these candles and shadow work, you know, they symbolize the process of healing, but it's a temporary process. It requires constant maintenance and attention because at some point that block of wax is going to melt down to the very end of the wick and that candle has to be replaced. Something else new has to take place so that a new candle can present itself. And this whole experience was very theopoetic for me. It's just how my mind works. My imagination is intertwined with my spirituality. And so when we go inward, it's very creative, it's very visual. And so the visual pieces you see are just glimpses of what we see or what we understand. But it's not always visual. Sometimes it's based on feeling. Sometimes we feel more than we see, but sometimes it helps to see what we're feeling. Wow. Wow. Wow.